Hey guys, it's Kevin Lawton, and I am here with the New Warehouse Podcast at Retail Reworks headquarters in Houston, Texas, and I'm joined by Brian Adams. He is the co-founder at Retail Reworks, The Return, uh, many other companies, as I've learned today. He's had a lot of different experiences, uh, entrepreneur for life, definitely, um, but doing some very interesting things within the return space and the re-commerce and remanufacturing space. So, uh, Brian, first of all, thank you for having me here in Houston, uh, and thank you for joining me here on the podcast. How are you doing? Welcome to Texas. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I'm learning uh, about how, how much bigger everything here is in Texas and what Texas size fun is and all, all those great things. So, uh, Brian is the co-founder of Retail Reworks, also The Return, uh, which is new to come to market, right? Um, so, and Sutton Brands, too, as well. Um, so tell us a little bit about kind of what you do and in, in this return space, because you're very, very focused on returns. I got to see the operation out here where they're processing tons of returns a day. Um, but from your perspective, I guess, tell us a little bit about your, your companies and how you're involved in that space. So, you know, I, I started off as a lifelong entrepreneur, started my first business when I was in college. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so I started picking them kids de, um, laundry when I was at the University of Alabama. So I would outsource okay. to laundromats and I would pay a guy who was at the bar and we would go get prepaid from kids and got in with the universities. And from then I haven't really turned back since. Um, had lots of businesses, sold some, bought some, started some. Um, Learned a lot of lessons along the way, but I've always been real hands-on on them. Um, and these, this space that we're in here with reverse logistics, re-commerce, recycling, remanufacturing, um, there's been a big gap in the in the valuation market for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. And there was a major correction that occurred really in November. Um, okay. Really, probably February of 2023, uh, when SVP occurred and when you saw um, interest mm. rates rise and the dollar get stronger, oil yeah. didn't go to two hundred dollars. And mm -hmm. um, being in Texas, and you've seen uh, corrections in industries, you knew what that was going to be like, and um, it's just begun. Yeah, it's just begun. Yeah, and I, I think it's interesting too, as I, I've talked to you today and, and learned here, being with you at your, your headquarters here. I mean. You know, you've been involved in kind of this, um, I guess, re recycling in a sense, like since the beginning when you really started out. Um, so I guess I'm curious, like, where does that kind of passion for that side of the industry come from? Yeah, um, I started off in, we were in the restoration business for clothing. So we restore clothing for insurance companies. And from then I got into the industrial cleaning business, mm -hmm. doing large scale um stuff for hotels and hospitality business. Um, and then in 2011, I, I sold a business okay. uh, to a private equity group, and then I bought a business. And the business took uh, hundreds of millions of pounds of recycled tires and plastic. Wow. We extruded them together, and we had a patented process to be able to make lumber dimension boards. Mm. And we sold to the largest companies in the world, government contracts, everything. And I could never make it sustainable. Mm. And because it just was too high of a cost to make uh, the product, and it just couldn't become sustainable. Sustainable means that it could stand on its own and yeah. it be. You know, there's a reason in that triangle. That when circle, they, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. it goes in a circle. That means that mm. you can make something out of something else newer and you can cheaper and you can make it out of something new. And we competed against wood and uh, – Okay. Yeah. So wood, <laughs> like wood and trees, they're pretty big competitors. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, I moved the business to India. I did all sorts of stuff and I just couldn't make it be mm. sustainable, sustainable meaning and profitable. It was super, it was super environmentally friendly. Yeah. And it did a lot of stuff good for the world, but it couldn't, it couldn't last. And so, um, we got in originally into a large scale pre-retail corrections and inspections game. Mm. Um, we do large, massive scales um, corrections for companies, whether it was, you know, various sewing projects, you know, million piece jobs all over. Mm. Um, 
And those are always, you know, very well, you know, mathed out, meaning that the brand who or the manufacturer knows what the cost was, the brand knows what it's willing to pay, they understand the difference, and so it always masks out very well. Um, and then, uh, you know, I started learning about the reverse logistics game, the re-commerce game, the recycling yeah. game, the remanufacturing game, and, um, you know, I was just having a hard time making sense of um, how the math was working for a lot of people, and um, so, you know, I've always followed the dollar as a small business mm -hmm. guy, and, you yeah. know, our goal here is to help be a partner with someone, um, and in doing so, we want to never be looked on as a vendor, okay. never be looked upon as something that costs money. Um, we want to be able to help make you and your brand, whatever it is, more profitable, sustainable, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully along the way we're giving a little, real good service for doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I've seen the operation here uh, today and on the, the tour and the, the lowdown on everything that's going on with returns. And it, it's pretty impressive. I mean, focus specifically on, on returns and re-commerce and remanufacturing. I mean, it's really kind of uh, amazing some of the, I think the avenues that you've found within the space as well. Um, so, I, I mean, I guess from your perspective, because, you know, you're, you're seeing a ton of returns every day, right? So tell us a little bit about, from your perspective, like the current state of returns and, and where do we stand in that? Sure. Um, I think forever, you know, returns, returns were something that, um, you know, a 3PL had to do if they wanted to gain the business, they had to offer yeah. reverse logistics services. And um, as you know, first of all, it wasn't my idea to send a toothbrush around the country and return it back for free. <laughs> and, um, you know, and so when they did that, that created a behavior within people mm. that that's how they want to do shopping. That's the expectation, and, yeah. Yeah, that's the expectation. And Main Street moved, you know, Main mm. and Main moved from the malls to your living room. Yeah. And when in doing so, um, your expectation was is that you could order five and return four. And... As return rates get higher, manufacturing costs get lower. Mm. Um, returns became an you know impeded on people's profitability, mm. and when the when the economic shift occurred and the market signaled that um, valuations were based upon cash flow, mm. um, what that means is cash is king and you got to be profitable. Yeah. And so, what has happened more recently is, is that I would say people have gotten religion around math, real mm -hmm. simple math about, yeah. okay, how much does, you know, for example, I showed you one where they import the, the product. It's a pair of shoes. Well, they buy them mm. landed for $27. Yeah. Well, I helped through the university of Alabama through the business department. We did an exercise with some, well, the cost to get them to the first customer is about eighty-eight dollars. Well, they sell them for one hundred and forty dollars. Yeah. By the time that they return them and do them all again and try to sell them the second time, it's almost one hundred twenty-two dollars. So we're selling for one hundred and forty dollars. And if they crazy. want to, if they want to liquidate those to one of these liquidating mm. big box places, the max that they were going to get was about three fifty an item. Wow. They tried e-commerce. They couldn't move the product. So the state of returns is, is that returns are a very big piece yeah. in people's business. It's not a small line item on a p &L. It's a large oh, line yeah. item on a P&L. Yeah. And it needs to have very clear focus. You know, forward logistics and reverse logistics are two separate offices. They're not, yeah. you know, they're not in the same... <laughs> You know, arena. Very different, yeah. Yeah, completely different. And, um, you know, I, I have supported all of the re-commerce um, individuals, the companies, anything with the recycling by providing, you know, back-end logistics and mm. operations to be able to help um, propel that and, you know, power that so that they can be able to provide, you know, better friction or reduce the amount of friction to – their customers so they can help them make them be more profitable. But at the end of the day, um, if you look at waste management, who is okay. the king yeah. of the game, um, 
long time ago, I was at a this at waste management at their Walmart facility, mm-hmm. and uh, waste management said to me, said the only way to make this work is you got to make the circle smaller. Interesting. Okay. So the only way to make circularity work is you got to make the circle smaller. If the circles are big, it doesn't matter if you have you know. 5, 10, 20 warehouses around the country, those items still have to travel to all of those places. Right. And the largest component in this whole scenario is the cost of shipping. Mm. And so the only way to lower the cost of shipping is to shorten the distance. You know. Absolutely, yeah. So tell us, I guess, a little bit about, and I think you're alluding to this maybe, right, is this new kind of, um, I guess, launch you guys are yeah. doing, right? So the I've, returns. Yeah, yeah right. So... Um, we, we proved it out here in Houston, Texas, by having items shipped here by the, you know, tens and, you know, hundred thousands a week. Mm-hmm. Um, reprocessing returns, reprocessing re-commerce items, giving those back to 3PLs, DCs, and or refilling for people. By the end of the day, those items cost an average of 8 to $9 to get here. And yep. then an 8 to $9 on a single parcel. Um on that's, a single parcel suit. In addition to originally getting it to yeah, the customer, yeah. right? So yeah. it's about an average of, what, $32 to do a return on the full return. And I Insane. said, yeah. you know, when we grew up in the world of uh, does it make more sense to rework something or to replace something? Mm. And so a lot of the times I was seeing this stuff come back, and I was like, it, it, they should have just gave it to them as marketing and said, yeah. we're going to buy something new. And so I partnered with an existing um, network of real estate um, mm-hmm. through a technology that we developed through um, – there's a point-of-sale so- software that makes up the dry cleaning world that controls about 75 to 80% of the entire market. Wow. And so we created um, a connection with a software that we've developed here in which that um, – whether it's an RMS, whether it's a re-commerce provider, it'll allow you to be able to go walk in boxless, you mm-hmm. know, um, boxless, you know, fraudless to walk in with the item um, and have that item then be checked immediately. Right. They can instantly institute the refund uh, or signal that it's okay to institute the refund. And at that moment, they can make it available for resale. Mm -hmm. So a state of an item can only be in three states, right? So like, you know, there's only three states. Sold, not sold, but available for sale or not available for sale. Gotcha. There's only three states that that thing can be in. So hopefully we can get as much out of not available for resale. To available for sale. To available for sale. Yeah. And the quicker you can do that... Reduces the inventory cost, reduces the inventory time. And so when I named the software, I called it R4, mm. Return Revenue Recapture Rate. And people are like, what does that mean? And I said, well, as a small business guy who had to make payroll every day, the faster you can recapture the revenue yeah, on the better. return, the lower that the cost of the inventory you're going to have to have, the lower of it, it's it's all about speed. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's crazy because even, um, you know, some of the students I teach, like, at this past semester, I was telling them, like, oh, you know, some companies, like, for returns, like, they'll say, like, oh, like, just keep it, we'll send you another one. And they were like, what? Why would they do that? Like, they're losing money. And I'm like, do you have any idea, like, how much it costs to, like, return and reprocess and figure out all those things? I mean, it's it, it's pretty wild to think about the cost associated with that. Um, soft cost is what they're called. So there's a yeah. hard cost as the purchase of the product. Yeah. The soft cost of the part that that's where it erodes margins tremendously, and it's also a part that's really hard for people to understand what the the calculation of the soft costs are all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's pretty remarkable, and even as you you know you talk me through some of the scenarios you have here in the building and and looking at those costs i mean it, it's pretty wild but I, I love the concept that you guys are doing and having these you know i mean many many locations thousands of locations you mm-hmm, told yeah. me um that thousands co- thousands. consumers will be able to just go in and, and drop off the return and have it processed but you mentioned something in there too about the the fraud side of fraud returns. Side. Yeah, so, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah we, you know, look, the, the the person receiving the return has to be incentivized to make sure that 
it is what it is. We see right. we see people buying pajamas, cutting the labels off and putting the labels back on to lesser expensive pajamas and returning them. We see <laughs> we see people sending okay. water and we saw a big bedding company where they mm-hmm. bought ten thousand dollars worth of bedding and they returned it based upon weight. So they went and bought a bunch of water, put uh-huh. it in the boxes, and the item is refunded at scan. Uh, so it's registering as like the right weight. Correct. But what's inside the box is actually Correct. something different. Yeah. Correct. Wow. And and you know a lot of these RMSs have five days you know leeway or you know they can have up to thirty days, but usually by the time it's you know they've already gotten them out of there so someone has to be able to walk yeah. in with the item and do it and, and we support all the existing um return networks you know that are ex- you know at various retail stores mm. our value is is that we want to be in the repackaging and um, reworking business immediately so that that item is now available for resale and it doesn't travel around unavailable for sale it yeah. travels around available for resale and then, you know, a big part of the world is re-commerce, and re-commerce has to work because, if, you know, if 25 things bought on the Internet right now, 24 of them are used, using everything from live shopping to re-commerce yeah. and all that stuff. And there has to be a better infrastructure put in place to be able to support and maintain the logistics needs mm-hmm. to be able to take an item that was originally sold at 80 and the second cost, it can't cost 50% more to sell it at again. It has to be circular. So items have to remain regional so that they don't have such a bad degradation problem. Um, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's such a, such an interesting, um, I guess, problem to, to unpack and understand everything that's going on behind that. Cause I think as the, Consumer looks at it, they're like, oh, well, you know, it's a free return. Like, I can free send return. it back, no problem. And you don't think about, like, all of those things that are happening behind the scenes and all the potential waste, really, that can, can come up from it. Um, so, I mean, as we look at that, and you know, I think you guys are addressing maybe part of this, but, like, what do you see as kind of the, the future of returns and where are returns heading in the long term? Circular, no doubt about it. I mean, if you follow yeah. all of the, if you if you follow capital markets and you follow where the money is being invested and in, it's into sustainable circular economy things, and what does that mean? So you can go all the way to Europe and you can see the mandates that they have in place. Right. If you take all the way back, you know, and you can say, look, you know, the average company, if they buy a hundred, they might only sell sixty. Mm. Okay, but really they're selling about 40 with 60 overage, right? Yeah. And then they're able to offload those things. Well, if I told you the 10 largest problems in the world, yeah. one of them is going to be the, you know, the effect that clothing mm. has on the landfills of the world. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big, big deal. And so we partnered also. Um, there's, there's tons of excess inventory. There's tons of excess returns. And at the end of the day, I'd sit up in bed and think, you know, God, what did this fabric do wrong? <laughs> you know, what did this the shirt... The fabric's not guilty, right? The, the fabric's not guilty. You know, <laughs> what happens is, is that the brand, mm. the brand is usually guilty. Yeah. Because the brand can't sell the fabric that they purchased. Mm. And so what needs to have happen, right? Well, you know, it's all about the post-journey, post-purchase journey of a return. Mm. And, like, there's a lot of great companies that have it figured out. They're called Centos. Yeah. Aramark, yeah. and they're real good at renting things. Mm. And the durability of that product is real good. And, you know, you go to the Army, and these people are, you know, reusing stuff all the time. I yeah. can't, we can't figure that in here. And the reason is, is the infrastructure in place. And so when someone says they're buying something used, all of a sudden mm. their mindset changes. But if they're buying something oh, yeah. sustainable, it's yeah. different. That's so yeah. I've partnered with um, some celebrities in which we take – excess inventories and excess returns, and we remanufacture it for them in which they have now their own line, mm. which now they're doing good for the world. And that's um, gained a lot of traction here as well. Yeah. Um, and we remanufacture it. Um, we develop all of their, you know, marketplaces for them, distribute it for them, um, all out of here. And, you know, they're able to uh, do good. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's such a such a great thing. I mean, I think it's like I said before, I think the consumer doesn't necessarily realize 
the impact of that return, right? They're just thinking about, you know, uh, well, you know, I was able to order, you know, this thing and uh, I can just send it back because I don't like it or it doesn't fit right. Uh, but what happens to that, like in that cycle? And I, I love the fact that you guys are looking at that and addressing that and, and taking it to a different level, like you said, and being able to remanufacture that and, and bring it back to the market and deliver that. So, I, I mean, it's really interesting what you guys are doing. And I love that you're taking that aspect and, and keeping those things out of landfill because ultimately, I mean, it just it just piles up, right? I mean, you could, I mean, you could probably tell us, you know, there's you would be thousands of you, things. You would right? just be astonished at the amount of inventory that's left inside your viewers, three PLs that yeah. the original brand skedaddled on them and didn't pay the bills, and yeah. they're sitting in there and they went out of business. And what is that three PL going to do with this stuff? And you know, they have jobbers come in and say, "We'll give you a dollar to a quarter to you know all sorts of stuff." Yeah. And, you know, they just, they don't know what to do with things. There's, you know, there's there's tons of examples of just, you know, excess inventory everywhere and excess yeah. returns everywhere. And, uh, you know, the question is, what's the highest and best use for it? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, what's the highest and best use for stuff? And um, how can you create an infrastructure where a circular economy can work. And at the end of the day, you know, one item that might wind up at one drop-off location that then goes to another consolidation place that then goes to another truck that then comes here and it's all moving around those locations without being available to be sold. And when it finally gets here, the math doesn't work for yeah. the brand. And it was cheap. I mean... At the end of the day, you got to do good business, and yeah. uh, we're just trying to help brands do good business. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I think those costs are are so high. Like you gave us the example of the, the shoe company. By the time you know everything gets all the way around, like I mean, they're looking at like a thirteen dollar margin, maybe right. And I mean, I think that's like it, it's really critical to understand that, and, and also you know be able to have a, a partner like you guys to to help to disseminate that and, and really understand like oh well how can we actually make this into something like for you instead or, or make sure that this doesn't hit the landfill and, and save it a little bit in a way so it's really interesting what you guys have put together and obviously through your years of experience and uh through recycling and you know re-commerce and all these different things i mean it's great to see what you guys have been able to do and it's been great to see the operation here too and, and what you guys are building with the return and, and being able to bring that to the, the market and, and really make it different so uh, Brian, I appreciate you so much for, for having me here and, and showing me the operation and teaching me a little bit more about the return side of things as well. Um, if people are interested in, in getting in touch with you or getting in touch with uh, the multiple different uh, things you're working on, what's the best way to do that? I mean, Brian Adams at LinkedIn, but uh, the part that's impressive, you know, being a young entrepreneur my whole life and mm. never uh, really ever gotten to have a job, you know, when I started my first business, I had to knock on doors and put mm. door hangers. And uh, so this whole world of LinkedIn and podcasting and all that's kind of <laughs> new for me. But, uh, yeah. you know, you've, you've, you've gained a following here I've, I've seen, and um, I'm proud to support you any way we can. And uh, I hope you go off and kill it and become the next Joe Rogan to help. Uh, <laughs> we'll and, see about that. Or yeah, uh, but Joe you're doing, Rogan a, gr a, yeah, you're doing right? a great Something job. Like and, yeah. you know, I watched a lot of people come here for you today to support you. And mm. uh, you should be proud of what you're doing. And uh, yeah. you're doing a great job. Yeah, I appreciate that, definitely. And, uh, you know, we definitely appreciate the the insight and the, the wisdom, too, from your years in entrepreneurship. Uh, entrepreneurship and uh, and today's your your birthday as well too. Right? It, it, it is a birthday. Yeah, so, so happy um, birthday to you. Yeah, halfway to ninety. Halfway to ninety. Oh, that's a good way to put it. Okay, yeah. you got you got a long way to go. I you're do. still you're still I young, do. man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it very much for you coming on the podcast and for hosting me here in your space in Houston as well. So. Uh, Brian, thank you very much. And we'll definitely put all the information about Brian and his uh, multiple different companies involving returns and recommerce and remanufacturing on the newwarehouse.com as well. So Brian, thank you once again for your time today. Thank you, man.